caveat to it. How would you, and I asked a bunch of the kids, read that to me, would you just read that? How would that, how would you read that, Adriana? We love everybody, really. Here's how I read it after they all did that. You know, they're all smiling, really proud of themselves. Yeah, we got that. I look at it and I go, we love everybody. Really? Yeah, it's kind of scary to think about because there are some people in my day that I'm not always nice to. I know. What if one of those kids that I can was God? Or the person I yelled to who cut me off on the way to Chipotle or youth group? And then there's that one person who I walk by every single day in the hallway and always look the other way, never mind to smile at. I've been thinking about those questions we discussed. And if God was a person in my life and I wasn't nice to him, that could be really bad. I know, right? Because Gina's is always saying, we love everybody. But do you? I mean, honestly. Well, I try really hard to because after all, I don't know what someone else is going through. And who knows how God will show up in our everyday lives. So, what do you think God looks like? I personally believe that God shows himself through every person in my life who has ever done something to lead me in the right direction or wants me to do well in life. A good friend. Someone you can count on for anything. It's like a best friend. God is in all of us, not just one person. He looks like no one I've ever seen. I'm willing to love him. God would look like anyone who does good for people or nothing in return. God would look like an older role model who guides people. Kind of like Morgan Freeman. He would look like anything. You may not even know that it's him. God would just be a stranger. He would be someone that would be kind to everyone, always helping out, just a random guy. God could look like any of us. In my life, I would imagine God as someone who cared and loved me, like my friends and family. But God is also the people we often pay little attention to. The homeless, the hungry, and the needy are all God's children. Although they may not act or look like us, these people deserve our respect and love. I visualize God as a flame that never goes out. I think it would be a person of high morals, someone who has had multiple causes and devoted their life to those causes while spreading awareness. God could be anyone, guy, girl, beard or no beard, short or tall, fat or skinny, anyone. I have a feeling that maybe God could pass, me, could pass by me every day and I would never know it. God can look like a lot of things to a lot of different people. God would look like a caring person who just gives and gives to others and asks for nothing in return. He would like a regular person so that no one would suspect him to be God. Everyone I encounter has something godly about them. Someone to look up to that loves you unconditionally. Wow, so now you're kind of scaring me. So I wonder how many times I'm sat next to God and ignored him. Me too, but now that we're looking everywhere, how cool would it be if we could ask God any question we wanted and we'd get the answer to it? Imagine sitting down in Starbucks with my venti con candy frappuccino and having one-on-one -on -one time with God. Now that would be an amazing day. Here's what I would ask. Why do you let people get hurt so badly? Why am I here? What is my purpose in life? Will all this pain be worth it? What do you think about me and can you help me find myself? How can life be so good and then change so quickly? How am I doing so far? Can you please help the people who actually need stuff to survive? I would ask him how everything came to be. To me, that's the biggest question. I would ask how good of a person I've been. I would like to know if I have been a good Christian and how I could improve. Why do good things happen to the good and faithful people? Why don't you show your presence to everyone to confirm their faith? Where is society headed? Is heaven real? I would ask why he loves us after all the sins we commit. And no matter how hard we try to break away, God's love is always there. In what ways am I living my life wrong? Are you happy with the Christian people, and are we carrying out your wishes fully? Why do I have to live a mortal life first, rather than existing as a heavenly one? Are you proud of me? What do you have planned for me to do that's going to make a difference? I would ask him what his plan was for my life. I don't have any idea where it is going, what I'm going to do, or how I'm going to get there. I feel so lost most of the time, I'm confused about why things happen. Are you proud of the things that I've done? Why can't everyone just love one another? Why is there so much hate? That's a lot of questions. I'd really like to hear the answers to those, but it might mean there are answers I might not want to hear either. Yeah, but remember that every day we get to get up and start all over again. You know how it says on the youth room wall, we love everybody, really? I guess that's what it means to be Christian. We keep talking about that on Sunday evenings, but what does that really mean, be a Christian? Being a Christian means that you get to see the best in every person and situation around you, even when that's hard. 
I believe that everything doesn't necessarily happen for a reason, but that everything that happens causes a person to grow, become a better person. A Christian interacts with every type of person that they may encounter, and they try to see the good in them. Sometimes there are malicious people out there, and their only goal is to hurt others. You have to have the strength to grow through this encounter in order to become a better person. To be a Christian means not only loving those who love you, but loving those who don't. This means lending a hand to those in need and being genuinely kind. Being a Christian means to use your faith in God and Jesus to help other people. To believe in God and be nice. To interact and be fair and help others. To be a Christian, you must have faith in God and yourself to do what's right for others in God, not just yourself. To be there when no one else is. To do good in all things. To do the right thing. All people should be treated well, regardless of stature or appearance. It means not that you would always go out of your way to help someone, but if given the opportunity to do so, then you should. Being a Christian means to care and be kind to all. To be a true Christian is not to be perfect, but to be kind and carry God through you wherever you go. You show hope to everyone. It means you don't have to judge people and accept anyone that comes into your life for who they are, no matter their race, age, gender, sexual orientation, or religion. It means that you interact with everybody with compassion and empathy. Being a Christian means that you accept God and are willing to repent your sins. Christians look like everyday people and hopefully seek the best in others. It means you will do the right thing even when you will be judged or persecuted for it. To be a Christian means to strive to be like Christ. This means striving to love everybody, really. That's a lot of things to be. It seems impossible. No wonder it's not easy to be a Christian. I just try to be a caring and accepting person, but it's not as easy as it sounds, and the world makes it much harder. I'm so glad we get this opportunity to come back week after week on Sunday nights and talk about these things. I don't know where my life would be without this youth group. It's the one place I can come and truly be myself and know that I am loved and accepted for who I am. So there you have it. Those are their words. You guys can say. Their words that we put together. They answered those questions a few weeks ago. So they do love everybody, really. They really do. It isn't just a motto. It is what they live. They embrace it. They go out and they share it everywhere they go, people they encounter. They represent you. They represent their faith, and they represent hope. The world will tell you that teenagers, what we see on the news, they're in trouble. They're stealing. They're doing drugs. They're cutting school. I tell you, they are hope. They aren't our future. They're now. They're sitting here. They're going out all the time, and they're coming week after week after week because they want to, to church. Not because they have to. Nobody makes them. The world offers them lots of other places they could go. They could stay at home. They could play video games. They could sleep. They could hang out with friends. They choose to come to youth group. They choose to ask those hard questions. They choose to be uncomfortable and to grow. They choose to give up their time and to pay a lot of money to sleep in hot, dirty places with no cell phones. Imagine. No contact with others. A lot of times, not food you're used to, might not even be enough food when we go to Peru. But they do it because they know it's the right thing to do. And they go thinking they're going to make a difference and they're going to change others. And they will. But guess what else happens? They are fundamentally changed. They come home different. We say time after time after time, I say, give me your child. Let them go on this trip. I will bring you back a different child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. They do change. It sounds trite, but it's true. You can ask any of them. But they can't do it alone. They need your help. It takes all of us to be the hands and feet of God. All of us. They can physically go, but they can't get there without your support. Some of these kids might be new to the youth group this year or even last month. 
Some of them have been raised in the church, but all of them have a heart for mission. All of them want to go out and make a difference. Going to Peru is expensive. Not going to lie, it is. People might say, well, that's a lot of money. Why are we doing that? Well, we're doing it because there's a village in Peru on the Amazon with a hundred families who doesn't have a place to worship. And as Nikki put it so well, she wants to go and create a place where they can worship and have the same community that we do. So some of these kids, their parents can just write the check. Some of these kids, their parents struggle to put food on the table. But that doesn't mean that child is any less deserving to go and has any less heart for that. And so you're helping them. Let's that happen. They go, they represent you. They carry out the work of God no matter what. They bring, I have a young man. Now, when you think youth group, you think Sunday night, probably most of you are thinking girls. Yeah, girls come, they'll bring their friends, right? It's social, right? I have a young man, a 17-year-old, who has brought more young men to the youth group this year than anybody I've ever had. I think he's brought six. I'm not going to name him because I'm already putting him on the spot. Um, what a witness to what is going on. How many young men invite their friends, 16 and 17 years old, hey, come hang out with us on Sunday night. It'll be worth it, right? We went to Peru in 2007, so eight seven years ago. That trip fundamentally changed youth, one of who is here this morning. On that trip, we came home, and I have two youth now who have graduated and are nurses, one of whom is here this morning. Where are you, Miss Aisa? Over there in the corner. And her brother's going this year. One who's in medical school because of that trip. They went they saw, they said, I want to change the world, and I'm going to do it by going into a field where I know I can give back, and I want to go back someday with Doctors Without Borders and make a difference. They're changing lives. So, do they love everybody, really? Yeah, they do. That Come to Jesus talk a lot of years ago, it paid off. We don't have the other stuff going on. Is there always a little? Of course there's a little. But by and large, it's gone. They want to be there. They love each other. They're welcoming. And it's because of you allowing them to do it. These are your youth. And so, at the end of the service, we would love if you would like to help us. There will be um, baskets that the kids will have out there. But more than anything, take the opportunity to talk to one of these kids sometime. Ask them what their favorite part is. Ask them what the most memorable thing is. Ask them why they do it. And I think they'll tell you because it changes them at their core. Amen. At this time, 